the classic Romulan Bird of Prey tonight on What's in the Box. What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello everybody. My name is Trevor Celescu and I am, as always, the owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. Thank you very much for joining us on another edition of What's in the Box. And on these editions, we are looking at the classic ships of Star Trek, the original series. And this is the Romulan Bird of Prey, as seen in Balance of uh, Terror. And uh, what's interesting about this kit is this is the second time it's been released. This one is under the Round 2 label, but the original AMT kit of this was released in 1975. And the second release, which is this one in my hands, was brought out by Round 2, as I said before, in 2010. So now let's go down to our table and take the top off this and see what's in the box. And here we are once again on our table to look at the Romulan Bird of Prey. Now what's interesting about this box is it is an exact duplicate of the original box art from 1975. Round 2 has gone to some great lengths to preserve the looks of these classic kits, as you can see on the sides of the box. Now this is what's really cool here. On the side of this box is a re reproduction of what the original kits in the lineups were. The K-7 Space Station, the USS Enterprise kit, the Interplanetary UFO, also known as the Leif Erikson ship. This one glowed in the dark. The Galileo 7's shuttlecraft, Mr. Spock vs. the Snakes, and the Klingon battlecruiser, which we'll also be reviewing in an upcoming video. Now, this is a description on the box of the Romulans and their warbird. The Romulan ship, painted like a giant bird of prey, was introduced to Star Trek viewers on the Balance of Terror episode during the series' first season. The Romulans, an offshoot of the Vulcan race, were allied with the ruthless Klingons against the United Federation of Planets, championed by Captain Kirk's USS Enterprise. After an inconclusive war between the bad guys of the Star Empire and the Federation's good guys, a peace treaty was negotiated as and a neutral zone established between the two combatants. The treaty was the treaty remained unbroken except for one major incident depicted in Balance of Terror. The Romulan ship was armed with a plasma energy weapon which rendered all defenses useless. Its effectiveness was immediate it was limited only by its relatively short range. <clears throat> the ship was capable of becoming invisible by means of a cloaking device, which was subsequently captured. Clear nacelle domes and plasma weapon included. <clears throat> and there is the schematics, the drafted blueprint of the bird of prey. A display stand included. <laughs> Okay, now let's crack the lid on this. Now this is one out of my own collection, so I already took the plastic main wrapper off, but I haven't actually done much on the inside. So the first thing I get to see here in my model is the Romulan Bird of Prey instructions, which are very 1970s, uh, a good reproduction of what the original decal sh or the instruction sheet would have looked like. <clears throat> And uh, here they have the engine caps with a couple of optional pieces. The rudder. This is a very basic kit, actually. Uh, gluing your struts on. And the optional plasma weapon. And, of course, then you've got your optional stand here. And with this ship, and the Klingon one, which we'll review, they had a hole in a retainer, so you could actually put a piece of thread, drill a hole up top, and have it hanging on one piece of thread through the roof. Or attached to your ceiling, I should say. And uh, there's how the decals go on. And it's pretty basic as far as kits go. However, if you look, here is your decal sheet. The size of the box. Uh, I don't think I will open this, <clears throat> but <clears throat> you can kind of make the bird pattern out through there. And, of course, they give you the little book. Now, maybe I will open these. 
So. Here you have your your bridge and your semi saucer and the underneath and of course these will come apart and you get the Paramount Pictures Corporation logo underneath <clears throat> and that's metal rod for your display stand and your clear engine nacelle caps you can also build this with solid nacelle caps and there's your warp engines through the bags or your impulse ion engines i guess that's what it flew with and there's your your arms for your wings and of course the base very very simple kit actually this was actually on this side of the box <laughs> but it says treacherous warlike and cruel the infamous romulan empire was remembered for allowing no quarter no prisoners of war and no survivors but nearly a century of peace has passed since the last battle of the brutal earth romulan conflict the establishment of the neutral zone provided a long-lasting buffer between the two races to maintain peace after a devastating war. When a dis distress call from Earth Outpost 4 summons the USS Enterprise, the Romulans are found possessing technology allowing them to cloak their raptor-themed secret weapon. It would be up to Captain Kirk to outwit the Romulan commander and offset the balance of terror. This classic model kit is finally available again after a 30-year absence. Created using the original tooling, the kit includes optional new clear nacelle caps and plasma weapon. It is molded in gray and clear plastic, features black display stand with metal support rod, and includes large bird of prey decals. And there it is. So that is our review of the Romulan Bird of Prey kit from the original series. And it's so glad, it's such a good thing that we actually have this back again as model builders, despite the fact that I'm dropping it on the floor. <laughs> Maybe that should be the new part of this video. What's on the floor? What? Okay, anyway. <laughs> And there you go, the Romulan Bird of Prey. Well, we hope you enjoyed this episode of What's in the Box, where we looked at the Romulan Bird of Prey from Balance of Terror. It's such a great thing to actually have this back on the shelves, because when I was growing up, it was always one that I wanted, but could never find, because they only issued it in 1975. So here we have it back again. Now, if you would like to see a review of the 1983 version of the USS Enterprise, please click here. If you want to see the 1989 edition, click down here. If you would like to see the old Klingon D7 battlecruiser, click here. And like us and subscribe to our channel by clicking here. And don't forget to check out our website, www.monster-hobbies.ca. And we look forward to seeing you in our next review.